Welcome to the SPSS tutorial for the One-Way Repeated Measures ANOVA. This is Dr. Zapku. In this tutorial, you will learn how to conduct a One-Way Repeated Measures ANOVA using SPSS and use the SPSS output to write an APA results section. In this tutorial, we will consider the following research question. Is there a change in participants' math anxiety scores before, during, and after participation in a math anxiety group? Accordingly, the null hypothesis in which we will test is there is no change in participants' math anxiety scores when measured before, during, and after participation in a math anxiety group. Examining both the research question and the null hypothesis, we can note that we have one independent categorical variable, time, before intervention, during intervention, and after intervention. We can also note that we have one continuous dependent variable, the math anxiety score. Since we are examining one group of participants measured on the same scale on three different occasions, the one-way repeated measures ANOVA is appropriate for testing our null hypothesis. To begin testing the null hypothesis using an SPSS dataset, once you open SPSS, open the dataset in which you desire to work. Here we are going to use the repeated measures ANOVA practice dataset. To conduct a one-way repeated measures ANOVA, from the menu at the top of the screen, click Analyze, then click on General Linear Model, then on Repeated Measures. To progress in this tutorial, click on Repeated Measures. The Repeated Measures Define Factors dialog box will appear. In the Within Subject Factor Name box, type the name that represents your independent variable. In this case, it will be time. Note that this isn't the actual variable name, it's just a label that we're giving the independent variable. In the Number of Levels box, type the number of levels or groups involved. In this case, we have three, so we type three. Then we click Add. Click the Add button to progress. Both the factor name and the number of levels will be added. See the time 3 in the box? We now need to define the time 3, so we click the Define button. The Repeated Measures dialog box will appear. Here we are going to select the three variables that represent our repeated measure variable, and then click the arrow button to move them into the Within Subjects variable box. Here we are first going to click Math Anxiety Pretest. Then click the arrow button to move it into the Within Subjects variable box. Click the arrow button to progress in this tutorial. We'll do the same for the next two variables, the Math Anxiety Test During and the Math Anxiety Post Test. Once the three variables that represent the repeated measure variables are moved into the Within Subjects variable box, we will click Options. Click Options to progress in this tutorial. When the Repeated Measures option dialog box appears, we first want to request Post Hoc Test. We do this by selecting the independent variable name, that is, in this case, time, from the Factor and Factor Interaction section. We then want to move it into the Display Means 4 box. Once we have selected our independent variable, time, we click the arrow button to move it into the Display Means 4 box. We then want to tick Compare Mean Effects. In the Confidence Interval Adjustment, click Bonferroni. Please see your textbook for further discussion of these confidence interval adjustments. In the box labeled Display, tick Descriptive Statistics. Tick Estimates of Effect Size, and tick Observe Power. Ensure your significance level is set at 0 .05 or a more stringent level if you desire. Here we're going to use 0 .05. Then click Continue. This takes us back to the Repeated Measures dialog box. Here we click OK to generate our SPSS output. To progress in this tutorial, click OK. Once the SPSS output is generated, the first step that you want to take is to check the sample information and note the descriptive statistics. You can do this by looking at the descriptive statistics box. Note, does your n value make sense? Do the mean values make sense in light of the given scale that you used? Check this information. Once you've checked this information and it looks good, you then want to note the descriptive statistics so that you can report them in your APA results section. Here you can see the the mean, the standard deviation, and the n for each of the three sets of scores. Note that the 
pretest has the lowest score and the post-test has the highest mean score. In order to progress in this tutorial, click on the N value. Next we examine whether or not we have significant results. We do this by looking at the multivariate test table. In this table, we want to look at the Wilkes lambda, and we also want to look at the associated significance value, remember the SIG column. Note that all the multivariate tests yield the same results, but most commonly reported is Wilkes lambda, so that's what we will be using. In this example, we know that the value for the Wilkes Lens Beta is 0.25 with a significance value of 0 0.000, which really means a significance value of 0 0.0005. Since the alpha level is less than 0 0.05, we can conclude that we have statistically significant effects or a statistically significant effect for time. This suggests that there was a significant, this suggests that there was a change in the math anxiety scores across the three different time periods that we looked at before, during, and after. Roll your mouse over the Wilkes Lamb beta to see how you would report this information in the APA results section. Then to progress in this tutorial, choose the correct decision based on the results. Would you choose to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis? In the multivariate test table, we also want to take note of the effect size and power. According to the APA style manual, these should be reported in our APA results section. Additionally, although we found a statistically significant difference between our three sets of scores, we also want to assess effect size to determine more practical significance. Here we want to look at two columns. We want to look at partial eta squared for effect size and observe power for power. If you roll your mouse over the effect size and power, you will see how to report this information in an APA results section. When you are ready to progress in this tutorial, choose the correct interpretation for effect size based on Cohen. If you obtain statistically significant results in the ANOVA, you then need to take the next step and evaluate the pairwise comparison. Remember, if you obtain statistically significant results from the ANOVA, this simply suggests that there's a difference somewhere among your groups, or in our case, the set of scores. It does not tell us which set of scores differ from one another. Thus, we need to look at the pairwise comparison table, which compares each set of scores and indicates whether or not there's a difference between them, and whether or not that difference is significant. We determine the significance by looking in the SIG column. In this data set, you will notice that there is a significant difference between each set. If you roll your mouse over the SIG column, you will see one way that you can report an APA results section. When you are done, click the box next to the pairwise comparison table to complete or to progress in this tutorial. Now that we have examined the SPSS output, we can look at one way to write an APA results section. Here is an example. Take some time to read this, and when you are finished, click anywhere on the slide to progress. Completing the SPSS tutorial for the one-way repeated ANOVA. You should now understand how to conduct a one-way repeated measure ANOVA in SPSS and use the SPSS output to write an APA results section.